Welcome to the parish church of St. John the Baptist. It hasn't actually always been called the parish church. It's had many names. It's been called the Minster Church, the Cathedral Church, the Collegiate Church. But after the Reformation, it became a parish church. It's the oldest church in this city of Chester. Scholars are now saying we probably go back to Roman Christian times. On this site, many things have happened. They have defined the English nation. They are very important. And it is the duty of this generation of people to help preserve it for the next. So, when you come here and look round, you will see in its very stones over a thousand years of prayer and the stones that have shaped English and Welsh history. St John's has always been a building which has been intricately linked with the history of the, the city it's involved with. Right back to the sort of the Roman era, we suspect that the church was founded possibly on the site of the amphitheatre. But the, the really interesting phase of it is the construction of the, the church we see now, which is starting in about 1075. Uh, because it started as part of the push of the Normans into Wales. They wanted to take the Diocese of St Asaph's. Um, and to do that they thought they were better positioned in Chester than they were in Lichfield. So they, you've got to remember as well that this wasn't just a church, it was a school. This was your way out of the, sort of the drudgery of medieval life. Was you, could, you could come to St John's, you could learn that and you be, could become a monk or you could become a lawyer. And that's what they were. And these people who were coming through, they're not bureaucrats, they're not the nobility. They're the local people who are coming through the church of the, the Latin school here, which is, is in what was the old minster of St Mary by. By the 1100s the nuns have gone and they use it as a school and it's part of the college and it's literally a teaching college. You've got to think of it as a sort of Victorian university, except it's giving opportunities to working class people. Despite St John's being one of the most historically significant buildings in Chester, no one really knows it exists. Awareness of such an important building is paramount and there are people out there working hard to tackle this issue. Uh, the St John's Project was formed to basically preserve and save these wonderful buildings for people to use and the community to use. We provide a range of services here at St John's, from a refreshment area and bookshop to guided tours of the building itself. People come in for different reasons. You get your average person who comes in and uh, just wants to do something because they're in Chester for the day. You know, it's obviously on the tour way, so it's a case of maybe they've been to the amphitheatre, first of all, or maybe they've been for a walk along the walls. Usually you'll find that uh, a different type of person comes in, maybe if it's been raining, just to keep dry. They'll do their own thing. They don't want a tour, they just want to walk around. A lot of people do. You get others who come in just to pray because at the end of the day, it is a church. And then you get other people who come in because they're interested in historical things. They take one look at the door, even people from Chester, they don't know it exists. It's like the hidden jewel in the crown in a lot of ways. They're walking and it's almost like, wow. And then you get others on your bus tours, like the group of ladies maybe you might have seen earlier, where they want a little bit of uh, history, they want a quick tour around and they want to move on to the next thing. It's that people would have been on the last of the Crusades. Only five foot, but back in those days, a lot of people weren't that tall. It would have been finished with dogs at the bottom of his feet, and you can see where the strap comes across there, where the sword would come down. A lot of people, I don't know why, but a lot of people say their legs are crossed almost like they're, uh, 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 like a crucifixion, you know, like uh, on the cross, I'm not quite sure. I love it. I'm not very religious, but I love history, and this place has got that eclectic mix it has. It's got everything. It's got so much of history just in abundance if it makes any sense from early 607 straight the way through Anglo-Saxon straight the way through to Cromwell's army holding it in the siege of Chester or even further on again where you've got an organ that was part of history when Queen Victoria entered the throne it's just got that da-da about it really has. So that's a bit of the history you'll undoubtedly hear more but what of the future? What is the place of the church in this modern world? The acoustics in this church are very good, especially for choirs and small orchestras. Uh, but we even have a bigger orchestra and when they are seated in this area it's very cramped and very difficult for the audience to see them because they're at the long, wrong level. What we're proposing to do is sweep away all these pews, bring the level out uh, to the same as the uh, sanctuary, and bring it right forward to the front of these pillars so that we have a great big 
area which will be a stage for orchestras, for concerts, for choirs, even for plays and productions of that kind which will be suitable in a church. We think that that will increase the value of this church to the community in Chester, uh, particularly those who want to come to concerts and want to see uh, spectacles. However, St John's is not the only building in need of your help. Sister Church St Peter's also has plans for the future to help increase its function in the local community. We are already running an internet cafe from St Peter's, which members of the community can come and use at their leisure. However, there are plans to expand this service and make it more accessible. As you can see, there's um, a large amount of space up here which at the moment isn't used for anything at all. So it's our vision in the future to really open up this space and maybe use it to extend the internet cafe um, as, a, as a facility for the rest of the community. So it's a really exciting project, uh, it's got a long way to go. Uh, we're currently working on the living history activity so we can get people dressed up in uh, 17th century civil war gear and all that type of stuff, so it's pretty exciting. Everyone can get involved with the St John's project. Uh, we've got, I say, people from all over the world involved. Uh, whatever you know, whatever your faith, creed, colour, Whatever you are, we want you involved. My name is Abel. Uh, I am from Madrid and I have been working as a volunteer manager for St. John's Project for almost one year. It has uh, proved an invaluable uh, personal and professional experience, allowing me an insight into inspirational heritage and uh, community-based projects. We've got lots of different roles from social media, PR, volunteering, serving cups, tea, coffee, running our internet cafe, doing funding bid work, whatever, whatever shakes your boat, we can find something for you. There are lots of different ways to get involved with the St John's project and help save these two magnificent buildings. The Duke of Westminster himself is backing the project. To pledge half a million pounds from my family Please help us restore them to their rightful place. Right at the heart of the community. At the heart of the community. At the heart of the community.